Perhaps you have heard about churches that are spirit-filled, and many of them mean by that that they really have energetic worship. Now, I don't discount that. Somebody who's filled with the Spirit, if their culture and their preferences manifest their spirit-filledness with really mm, energetic worship, no problem there. However, spirit-filled people do not need to jump and down to demonstrate that they are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So much of that can be cultural. The demonstration that we are filled with the spirit in worship is not what we look like on the outside, but what's going on on the inside, hence the and truth part. However, worship whatever degree of excitedness it happens to be at in your particular church are not the big marks that you're attending a spirit-filled church. Eric Davis put together a long list demonstrating the marks of a spirit-filled church. We've taken a look at eight. Let's see how many more we can get through. This is number nine from Eric Davis, a place where the flesh cannot last long. That's the sign of a spirit-filled church. We discover sin, I'm, I'm revealed to be a sinner, and I want to get rid of it. Lickety split. Eric Davis explained it like this. Doctrine which is fleshly will be exposed and eradicated. Methods of doing ministry which are fleshly will eventually be discovered and destroyed. People who are fleshly will only be able to tolerate a spirit-filled church for so long. In a spirit-filled church, one of two things will result repentance by the power of the Holy Spirit, or fleeing to a place more conductive to sheltering the flesh. Why? Because the preaching of the Word is happening. The Holy Spirit uses the preaching of the Word to work on people, to convict people of sin, righteousness, judgment. Unconverted people don't like hanging out in a real spirit-filled church. Sign number 10, you're in a spirit-filled church. There's an orderliness and intelligibility when gathered. Here's what Eric Davis said. Much of the spiritual spanking Paul administers in the first letter to the Corinthians in chapters 12 through 14 boils down to his desire that they focus on love, edification, and orderliness. Among other things, when they gather, it's to be done decently and in order where unintelligibility is absent and comprehension is present, a spirit-filled gathering will be orderly and intelligible. There's varying degrees of orderliness, but it shouldn't look like a complete zoo. Furthermore, when somebody says to you, hey, disengage your brain, that is not a spirit-filled church. Let's get through the rest of the list, shall we? A desire to exist in unity with each other marks a spirit-filled church. Number 12 from Eric Davis, you attend a spirit-filled church if there's an assurance that we are God's children by the finished work of Christ. People know that they belong to God. Overall, now, you can have doubts. We've got a product called Assurance available at wretched.tv because that's natural. But overall, there should be a confidence we are the elect of God here. Sign number 13, you're in a spirit-filled church. There's a perseverance in suffering. Number 14, in a spirit-filled church, there's a cheerful diligence to obey God's commands. And finally, the sign you're in a spirit-filled church, there's a delight to sing biblically sound songs with one another. No two things there, the one another. Maybe the music should be turned out enough so we can actually hear other voices. That could just be a preference issue. But biblically sound songs. Not just happy slappy songs, but biblically sound songs. Why? Because that is how the Holy Spirit works. And that's what makes this a mark of a Holy Spirit church.